all right y'all so for this video i particularly wanted to give my thoughts and my commentary on i'm not gonna say it don't say that y'all hell no y'all not about to have me hemmed up with that black man mm -mm, i'm not about to say it but um i just wanted to give my thoughts and commentary on it because i've seen a lot of like mixed feelings and mixed reviews on it and i'm leaning more towards the i think it was great and the reasons for me thinking it was great i am going to drop here so first we're going to start off with the fact that near Sorry, Supreme is in the back, you being weird. Nia DaCosta did a wonderful, wonderful job to me. She did a wonderful job and you know what? I, Bruh. my bad, <laughs> I really, really liked it. And then like, of course you could definitely put the parallels in there and you could see the little touches in there that Jordan Peele put in himself, but people a lot of people i keep hearing it they keep calling it jordan peels that is not correct it's not jordan peels it is nia da costa with production including jordan peel it is not his movie it is her piece so i just i really and i keep correcting people too and i, I don't feel bad about it i don't like I'm a movie person and if you're going to sit and have a conversation with me, you have to have that right or you're just going to get corrected. But first of all, I really think that it was, yes, spoilers, sorry. So if you haven't seen it, like, I'm sorry, turn back, don't watch this. I went to go see it. Um, yeah, it, we just going to refer to it as it. <laughs> I'm not playing with that. I'm not saying it. I dare you. Y'all will not have me hemmed up with that man. Hell no. I like my apartment. He not about to be popping up ooh, ooh, in here. No. So I went to go see it um, in theaters the day after it came out, which was August. It came out August 27th. I went to go see it August 28th. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. I was sitting in my theater seat <laughs> like this the whole time, but <laughs> it was okay, it was okay. I still saw, you know. Um, I'm a little scared yet, I don't care. I personally have been terrified of the original and the character itself since my mother decided to show me that movie when I was seven. So yeah, I sat in the theater just like that. I still watched the movie though. I still went and I still loved it. I really do. And honestly, I don't want to go see it in theaters again. I want to wait until it's streaming because I want to watch it again. Um, so one thing that I really, really liked, uh, as soon as it cut on, you could tell like all of the production studios, um, the names were flipped around to make it look like it was backwards a lot of people didn't get that notion of why it was flipped around that way and it was flipped around that way to like uh it was representation as if you know it was being shown in a mirror reflection so i thought that was pretty cool um i love the cast yaya abdul mateen i love him but his girlfriend in the movie tiana Parish, I believe is her name. Her, the dude who played her brother, he was like comedic genius. Black people don't need to be summoning. And I love that. Like he was perfect. Like he was not, you know how you'll watch a movie and like some of the cast will just be not memorable at all. I felt like all of the cast in that movie were like really, really good. Like they kept things up. They, um, the jokes fit, <laughs> a little bit of jokes fit. Um, the commentary between them fit. It wasn't like extremely awkwardly scripted and acted. I really liked that. Um, 
I was disappointed and I know this video is going to be bouncing all over the place but I was disappointed I was a little bit disappointed because um there was a little piece of the trailer and then I'm gonna ins I'm gonna insert it here there's a little piece of the trailer where you get to see like the, the bees coming through the window of the church and in the church in the pews you see is a it's a corpse with a white dress on and a white flower band and that is obviously to people who have seen the 1992 version that is obviously Helen now why they didn't use that I don't know but I was disappointed that we did not see that in there um, however to combat that disappointment the I told people I did I told people for the original one it was it could have been two it could have been one of two things either one it really did happen and um people just thought she was crazy Ellen or two two <laughs> sorry or two she did snap she snapped um for whatever reason I don't know but she snapped and she created him as a figment of her imagination to um maybe she had like a psychotic break but she was actually the one killing these people however just like she said the people from that neighborhood used that story to make them feel better about their everyday horrors in life I told people she was crazy she was crazy she snapped and she thought it up like she thought it up because she heard the story but she was actually the one that was killing people so how they told the story of Helen and this one bounced right off of that it was that she was crazy you know she was the one who was killing the people however she died in the bonfire but we we know that's not true we know that wasn't true um so i love that part and i love the the voiceovers that you could hear of her whoo now we're going to get into the crux and crevices of what scared the sh out of me with this one so I honestly I like the idea of the like passing of the torch I like that idea I think it was a very very good idea instead of you know it having just been one person and it's staying that way because I think uh, even though it was a spiritual sequel to the first one I think that how bad the original sequels two and three were like those were terrible like I never watched those and I'll never watch them again they're trash so I think that this was like a better direction to go in so with the it being like a passing of the torch thing I thought that was a great idea I thought that was a great idea and it it helped like broaden the story because in the first two sequels all you hear about is him in these paintings and of course yes we know what happened to him but they just like played it out so bad and it was terribly annoying but shouts out to Tony Todd he is an amazing amazing actor love him but scared to death of him um I think I want to say the art gallery scene that like really scared the bejesus out of me because the f first kill like you couldn't even see it and I think that was another aspect of it which it was kind of like a one of those things kind of like uh in Freddy vs Jason when Freddy was having Jason kill so that he could actually come out physically um it was kind of one of those things where it made me think that it was one of those things where okay you can only see him if you're like looking in a reflection of something if you're just like looking in front of you and he's standing in front of you you will not be able to see that and I think that is extremely freaking scary but 
he was kind of ruthless and I, I was just like damn but I thought it was like really really funny how like once the art scene happened the art gallery scene happened <laughs> when it was on the news and they said Anthony's name he was like oh shit they said my name not that two people had just been killed but oh they said my name and his girlfriend and her brother are looking at him like you asshole but that was I thought that was hilarious and then you get to uh he meets William Burke he gets to meet William Burke who had his own run-in with uh Sherman Fields who was actually the for this uh before Anthony actually transitions into him um that was creepy the first time we had ever saw him in his ness <laughs> that was extremely creepy like it was creepy to the point where it upset my stomach now I am the blood and gore or the ruthless kill I live for that shit but it was so disgusting it turned my stomach I didn't even want to eat no more popcorn after I was watching that but the special effects on this amazing I would say but like as far as the the story I think that they could have used a little bit more of Vanessa Williams but the piece that they did use with her don't say that <laughs> that was perfect and then when she went on to tell Anthony after he had found out that you know he was born in Cabrini Green that he was actually the baby that was meant to be the sacrifice it was like ouch heart-wrenching I would never want my parents to have to tell me some shit like that <laughs> um so he had actually had to go to the hospital because of that beast thing it was rotting his entire arm out and it was disgusting but me I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like you waited that long to go to the hospital your whole arm is about to fall off <laughs> why would you wait that long to go to the hospital but after he leaves his mother's house he actually gets kidnapped by William Burke and he's taken to the church for like a, a sacrificial ceremony to to get it started to get his miss started and i was like okay you just walk around with hooks and boxes and trench coats just waiting for something like this to happen <laughs> but he had um anthony's girlfriend he kind of like knew she was going to pop up at the the laundromat that he worked at and when she did he knocked her over their head and tied her up and she's sitting in the pews of the church just unconscious and she wakes up and she sees him and when i tell you this is another thing like jordan peele you can definitely tell his influences on this because jordan peele has a way of making you heavily uncomfortable and he definitely did that so when we saw anthony now he's like his entire arm is like decayed and rotted and this part of his body up even on the side of his face one of his eyes is like milky white so it's kind of like he can't see out of that one eye but if you paid attention or if you caught the correlation from the 1992 version where of course you know tony todd opens his jacket and bees just come out instead of making it like that there's a phobia and I don't know what it's called but I'm gonna insert a picture here it's like holes just like holes it looks like a beehive and that is what Anthony's skin looked like and when I tell you that was another thing that just upset my stomach I was just done at that point but it looked really cool though like I can do like the fake blood and all that stuff but I when it comes to like getting my blood drawn or seeing real blood I'm just like can't do it uh, take 
take it away. So when I saw that, I was just like, put the popcorn down, slowed it down. I can't, I can't eat or drink anymore until the rest of this movie is up. And so William Burke proceeds to let, you know, Tiana Parrish know, look, this is what's going on we need a witness you're gonna have to be a witness to this i wasn't a witness to what happened to sherman but you're gonna be a witness to this so you can tell everybody and she's like no 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 what the hell is wrong with you crazy crazy things that we would be thinking and he proceeds to tell his story and why you know this would need to happen he's like the baby has come back so he knew that anthony was that baby that was kidnapped which was really really messed up because he had this plan all along to turn him into this um he's sitting there then he goes and he pulls out a a, a hacksaw and i'm just like oh god no he, he's about to cut this man's hand off. This is certain, no, he's about to cut this man's hand off. So he proceeds to grab Anthony's decayed hand and just starts sawing at it. And you could see it too, just visual of the hand just falling off and being sawed off. And it was terrible because he said, you know, he can't feel it, Anthony can't feel it. That man was sitting there dropping tears. And I was just like, oh no, <laughs> it's happening. And then he opens the box, grabs the hook and just jams it in there. Jams it in there and wraps a belt around it. Stands him up and puts the trench coat on him, turns him around and says, look, it's done. And then this weirdo grabs freaking lollipops. It's just like, here, take them, do you want one? <laughs> and Tiana gets loose. She runs and she's trying to get out of there. William Burke actually ends up running after her, but she uh, retreats into a room and she ends up stabbing him to death with a shard of broken glass. Um, after she killed him, Anthony pops up in the background. And he's like, I think he's dead. So meanwhile, he's not like fully there yet. He's just He's been, you know, arm cut off, hook jammed in there, and he's like in a fugue state. And, but he's still like trying to let her know, you know, this is not me. Like, I'm still, you know, Anthony, and she's just scared. He walks up to her and actually ends up collapsing. And once he collapses in her lap, she's down on the floor and the police come and she's like, we're in here, we're in here, we're in here. And of course, the thing that we all know is gonna happen, happens. As soon as they come in, the police shoot Anthony as he's laying in her lap. Like for one, he's damn near unconscious, probably done lost half, well, not even half, cause he was, decayed already but lost most of the rest of the blood that he had in his body and the police shoot him while he's in her lap after that happens they get her in the car and say oh you're gonna tell them that he attacked the police so we had to shoot him we had to do that and she's just like i'll say whatever you want me to say if you turn let me see myself in the rearview mirror and at first, the officer's like, no. And she's like, I'll say what you want me to say. Just let me see myself. And she starts saying it. She says it five times. And as soon as the fifth time hits, you start seeing police officers fly out of the room. And Anthony appears. And Anthony's got bees around him. And he's just killing and killing slicing and dicing police officers he lets her go though and i'm thinking okay he lets her go because he still probably has some of anthony in his mind and not just okay yeah i'm gonna be <laughs> now so we're at the end then we get <clears throat> 
Tiana sees him run around the corner to the last police officer and he's on the side of the building lifting this police officer up. But what's different now is the little bit of bees that were around him, they've swarmed and turned into such a big, big hive worth of bees that you can't even see the face anymore. And I think what was really cool is that he glided like throughout the movie. He didn't walk, he glided. And I thought that was, I thought that was cool. I thought that was a cool additive to it. But as he's standing on the wall, killing the last police officer with the swarm of bees around his face, he glides in front of Tiana. And when the bees go away, the face that's on there is not Anthony anymore. It's Tony Todd. And at that moment, I was like, <laughs> And he says, tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's my little scared ass. But he says, tell everyone, which lets me know that this is being left up to uh, the possibility of sequels. Um, I thought that was a great way to leave off. However, I was a little disappointed with the lack of Tony Todd that there was in the movie. I thought that was a great cameo that he made. Amazing, wonderful. However, I thought that they could have used it a little bit more or I don't know, just put his voice in there a little bit more. There were parts of trailers that had his voice in it that were not in the movie. And that was a big disappointment to me. I'm like, you guys had so much opportunity however overall I thought the movie was very I thought the movie was very very good however it did scare the shit out of me it scared the shit out of me because now I don't have one adaptation not two adaptations but three adaptations of different ones that <laughs> I'll like see in my mind there's Tony Todd then there's Sherman Fields who actually I think was a little bit a little bit more scarier than Tony Todd I'm like they did a really really good job on making that extremely scary and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some little bits in here but the way he looked like I swear to god I I probably would just like die just by looking oh god please no i'm sorry i don't want to see you i don't want to see you i'm not gonna say your name see i'm scared but then there's anthony's version and i love me some yaya abdul mateen he said your back should be broken like a glow stick snap <laughs> love me some yaya abdul mateen i can break my back like a glow stick any time of the day Hashtag respectfully. All right, you better holler at me. I appreciate the respectfully because respectfully is important. But getting your back broke like a glow stick is also important too. But um, yeah, there's three different adaptations of that man that I got to look forward to seeing now. Scary. Um, but however, I, I really would love to see like a sequel. I really would love to see a sequel. Um, Overall, the picture was great. The story was great. I did think the third act was a little bit rushed. I felt like once they got in there, they were like, okay, we need to do this and we need to do this now. And I thought it was a little bit rushed, but other than that, well done, Nia DaCosta. Well done, girl. That's my commentary and my thoughts on... <laughs> Thank you for watching. My bad, I'm back because I left out a very, very vital piece of information that you guys need to know. I'm telling you, if you're anywhere and you see a piece of candy hit the floor out of nowhere or hear a piece of candy drop on the floor out of nowhere, make a mad dash for the motherfucking exit because your ass is grass. <laughs>